So, so uh, I asked uh, Steffi, and big thank you to Steffi for inviting me back over this, after this long period, and I asked Steffi, I said, she said 20 minutes. I said 20 minutes is too short. And then she said 30 minutes. And I thought, so I really wanted an hour, but I thought as I was doing this with Scott Galloway, as he talks two times faster than anybody else, that it actually is an hour. <laughs> but, but, but Yoss's introduction <laughs> was so short, I mean so long, that it's taken us back to 20 minutes. Actually, it's 20 minutes running now. Scott. Uh, okay, so we're gonna, this is a conversation. I ask a question, Sir Martin responds. I make a comment, he asks me a question, I answer, then he responds. So, uh, <laughs> we're gonna see relative lengths now. Okay, so. And by the way, I must congratulate the audience. It must have been an exhausting day for you. It's certainly been exhausting waiting to come on. Yeah, 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 we got it? work to do. So, <laughs> okay. You're ran the largest media company, or one of the largest media companies in the world. You have a board, you understand corporate governance, you've been on a bunch of boards. Should, should Cheryl Sandberg be fired? Ooh. So you, you started off with the easy questions. The, the answer to, my answer to that would be no. No, say what, more. What would your answer be? Uh, I think that, well, that's no fair. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, equal, equal you start, time. You no. start, I'll, 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 I'll well, pull up our, the rear. In our prep, Scott said, the first question I'm gonna ask you is about S4 Capital. So I've answered his question, so I'll tell you about S4 Capital. So, but coming back oh, to- Oh, wait, wait, you're not, you're joking, right? No, no, no I'm not joking, I'm deadly serious, okay. I'm deadly accurate, actually, okay. yeah, fine. But, no, coming back to, to Facebook, uh, as you and I discussed in the green room, Facebook actually hasn't suffered much, in my view, from an advertising point of view. I mean, the clients that I talk to, and I think you, you agree with this, Facebook, what, what has been lost on the Facebook swings have been gained on, let's say, the Instagram roundabouts. When I talk yep. to clients, some of them say they admit that they're cutting the budgets on Facebook, but the switch is to Instagram, which then brings us to the general question about the triopoly yep. the, around Google, Facebook, and Amazon. I see it a bit more broader than that. I talk about the Seven Sisters, yep. which includes Tencent and Alibaba and Apple and Microsoft. And then I would throw in the three software companies uh, you know, around Salesforce, Adobe, and Oracle. Those would be the 10 that I would be focused on. But as far as the media are concerned and the control, I mean, S4 Capital is focused totally on the 20% of budgets, about $200 billion, that are devoted to digital. Of that 200 billion, two years ago in 17, Google was 100 billion last year, I think it'll probably be 125, right. 130. Facebook the same year was 14. Next, last year, I think it'll probably be 50, maybe yep. even more. Yep. So they dominate, those two dominate. The, the one that's coming big time is Amazon, yep. which is attacking the search budgets, of Google, 55% of product searches in the United States already, Kantar statistic, already coming from Google search, yep. uh, from Amazon search. And the second area is the advertising area, which they're only at 10 billion. We, re we reckon about two and a half billion a quarter. Uh, my view is they will get to 100 billion, larger through How the- How long? Through, when you make a forecast, you never give the time as well. Yep. I, I would say, <laughs> I would say five to 10 years. Next time I come back to DLD, when I'm about 93, um, they'll probably be there. I, I think where they will score is in the long tail. What people don't understand, and Cheryl actually threw out a statistic, which I thought was very interesting. I think she referred to 91 million businesses around the world that use Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can't get from Facebook any statistic that tells you what the long tail is. I mean, I, in Asia, one of them told me a few months ago that 60% of their business was long tail. We, we estimated at WPP, we used to estimate it about 60 to 70%. Yep. The small, you know, the Jack Ma small guys. business, yep. that's the driver and is an employment driver as well. So when yep. she talks about 
employment and Facebook being a generator of employment, she's not far off, actually. I think that's, uh, that's a, a good line for them to pursue. But Amazon is going to come big time yep. for the long tail. And they're already up and running, and their people are really good. Yep. I mean, you talk to Google and Facebook people, they, their fear about Amazon is the quality of the people. And yep. Jeff, of course, is in you know, the market cap of the company, the value of options, is a driver and yep. motivator for people there. So that triopoly, I don't, I don't see it being broken. Yeah. Do you see it being broken or not? Uh, no, but I want to circle back to the initial question. I thought you were going to answer it. questions on an alternative basis. So we, we have this uh, perverse dynamic in Silicon Valley where women have to navigate a Hunger Games-like obstacle course to get to the, the C-suite of the executive washroom. And as a result, if a woman is fortunate enough to get to the C-suite, I think she becomes a protected class. And we also have this weird dynamic at Facebook where because of, there's a two-class shareholder system, there's this illusion that we can't fire. The Who board. is the controlling shareholder at Facebook? Well, the, Mark Zuckerberg controls the voting shares. Mm -hmm. But who do you think calls the shots? Mark Zuckerberg. OK, so why should Cheryl be the full woman? She should. He should. The fire, he should absolutely be removed as CEO. He should be made chairman. I believe and, and that adult supervision again, rather, rather as we had in another so case. Beyond the moral ago. argument, beyond the argument that at some point when you traffic in content that results in genocide, when you fail to put in place the safeguards that damage the elections of the greatest sovereign nations in the history of mankind, CEOs get fired for a lot less. They're both going to be fine. She, she is not a CEO, though. A CEO. So, distinct of the moral argument, you kick him up to chairman. He's the founder, controlling shareholder. You remove her, and within 10 trading days of those two things happening, Facebook adds the market capitalization of General Motors, because this company needs to turn the page. It's a great company. It's got a supernova business model, but enough already. When, when Carlos Ghosn is accused of expense impropriety, ends up in a Tokyo jail, the CEO of J. Crew grew same store sales. Yeah, but wait a hold second. Hold on, hold no, on. No, Let no, me finish. No, Give no, me no, some no. running rules. You prattled on for five no, no, minutes. No, no, Give no, me no. a minute. I, I, the I CEO did, of I J. Did Crew. Prattle. No, no, no. This, <laughs> you're more successful, more handsome than me, but I can interrupt. <laughs> the CEO of J. Crew doesn't grow same store sales, has a dispute with his board, he's removed. It, it, all this navel gazing and existential questioning around what can Mark and Cheryl do, it's pretty damn simple. They can be fired. Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a second. Now, one thing I want to set, set yep. straight. Carlos Ghosn, I think, is a victim of something that's happening. We saw it in our own... Geopolitical. We, yeah. Well, whether it's geopolitical or not, we certainly saw it in the case of Aegis, which was... Yep competitor of uh, WPP, yep. we've seen this sort of Japanese fetish about control. And we've seen a cleaning out of the, of the non-Japanese. I mean, the Japanese uh, business in, in Aegis yep. became more profitable after they bought Aegis. But Aegis actually became bigger. So the non-Japanese business became bigger than the Japanese business. Yep. And what you find, I think, with the Japanese business is they worry a lot about control. And what I think you're seeing at Renault and Nissan not wholly, there's obviously yep. something there, but to a very large part is the Japanese trying to exert control. Because in the, in the joint companies that we had with Dentsu yep. or ADK, we always found that, and we may have been to blame, you know, underlying, we may have been to blame because we were concerned about control too. But this control phenomenon is, I think, the fundamental driver. I mean, you don't incarcerate somebody like Carlos Ghosn in that way. I agree. They, they, they passed the law, I think it was in June or July of last year, enabling if they had evidence you could incarcerate somebody without going through any due process. But, but this is the illusion around Facebook. People back up into this notion. No one wants to be the board that fires the woman, right? The, the only, the only and an inspirational person who happens to get fired takes the no, fall. But it, what I'm saying, Scott, is this. Jesus, He's, Martin, really? It's uh, like it's you haven't like being had, at home over dinner with my kids. <laughs> Good. But... See, but if you think about what's happening right. at, at Facebook, and if you analyze, I asked you who controls it, yeah. who is the CEO, and you said, in fairness, you'd, check, you'd make him chairman, you'd kick him upstairs to chairman, okay. and you'd bring in a CEO? Yep. Okay, so that's, 
you know, that may be a way to go. I'm not yep. saying it is the way to go, but yep. that's, that's got nothing to do with victimization or Cheryl or whatever. So, but this is the illusion, the, the delusion that we fall into, and that is we have this knee-jerk excuse that he can't be fired because he's a controlling shareholder. And this is what would happen, and you've been on boards. The, the board who are supposed to be fiduciaries, not only for shareholders, which I believe the right thing to do would be to, to take those actions, they're fiduciaries for teens who are depressed, they're fiduciaries for the Commonwealth, they're fiduciaries for a larger ecosystem, they're also fiduciaries for our society. I do not believe at the end of the day, I believe they're the ones that are culpable here, because if they haul, I've been on boards where there's a controlling shareholder who says, I'll remove all of you if you don't do that. That's fine, but until they do that, your responsibility as a board is to do the right thing regardless of what happens. If they fired him, if they, if they all held hounds around the fire and said, we're removing him and making him chairman, he would have two choices. He either takes it or he goes full Cersei and he removes the entire board the next day. I don't think he's going to do that. Is he entitled to do it legally? He's the controlling shareholder. He could remove the, the board, the entire board the next day. But I don't think he would do that. Do you think he would do that? Unlikely. So then he can be fired. Well, That's what I want to acknowledge here. It's unlikely because of the, what's happened over the last year to 18 months. I mean, right. the pressure that they have been under. Yep. And to be fair, most of the tech giant companies who had similar structures yep. have gone through not quite as extreme experiences, yep. but similar experiences. I mean, one of the things that Cheryl said today, and this is a fundamental point in relation to the development of S4, was privacy is the reason why we're not going to share the data. Yep. The thing that concerns not our clients the most, but one of the things that concerns them the most is this inability to control the customer relationship. Right. And that is the key, the key in my view. Google, Facebook, Amazon, Tencent, Alibaba are walled gardens that control the media. Yeah. And when, in the old days when we had Walmart and Tesco and Carrefour controlling the retail relationship, yep. when we changed the internet, manufacturers thought, ah, we have an opportunity here to establish a direct relationship. Along come the e-retailers and they start to exercise the same degree of control. That's the battlefield. Battlefield is control, of, for control of first party data. And then that drives a holy trinity, if you like, of first party data con driving digital content, yep. which in our case is Media Monks, and programmatic, which in our case is Mighty Hive. So those three things to me, to my mind, are gonna shape the landscape in the future for some of the reasons we've been talking about. Yep. Not, not to do with what's for the right structure in Facebook, but a lot of the, the ancillary points. That data issue, though, is the key issue. Your turn, your question, Martin. Well, let's come to the, the triopoly. Do you see that being broken down or not? Absolutely not. If you have, media is a zero growth industry globally outside of China. Outside of the internet as well, outside of digital. But you have Facebook and Google will grow their top line revenues 25 or 28 billion combined this year. Amazon will add another 8 billion Amazon media groups. So you have $36 billion being taken out of the ecosystem. It is impossible to compete with this, these monopolies called Amazon, Apple, and Facebook. As a result, small companies... And Google. I'm sorry, Facebook, yeah. Google, and Amazon. As a result, small companies can't get out of the crib. We like to think at conferences like this, we live in an era of innovation. We live in an era of non-innovation. New business formation has been cut in half in the last 40 years because we have monopolies that have been allowed to run unfettered. In the United States, we have a proud legacy, or used to, of when a company became an invasive species, we would move in and break it up. So and we what seem would, to have lost the script. Well, oh, I'd do? break them up. Amazon, AWS, how? Amazon Fulfillment, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Messenger, Google, YouTube, boom. So how would you do that? Nine companies. So how would you do it? How would I do it? I'd, I would elect officials that ha that where their testicles actually descend, I'd fire up the FTC, <laughs> and I would break Amazon into three companies. You're going to see an Amazon spin anyways, because AWS on the birthing of the spin would be one of the 10 most valuable companies in the world. But the, Facebook's approval by the DOJ of their acquisition of Instagram was one of the greatest public policy failures of the last 20 years. Would you apply the same thinking to Tencent and Alibaba? It's difficult for an American to tell the Chinese what they should do. It doesn't stop do. Americans from doing it, though. Uh -huh. Now we're getting into really tough territory. 
the, hon the, honest, the honest answer is I don't have the domain expertise to speak intelligently around whether I think the Chinese right government is worried, funnily enough, if that's the right way of putting it, for the same reasons. They're very worried about the control of data that Tencent and Alibaba have. Uh, th these are two companies that haven't achieved, uh, haven't achieved a trillion dollars in market cap, yep. more likely half a trillion. But they're still very significant forces. And in the context, you know, we saw the gaming rules changes in China because the government looked as though they were concerned about the growth of gaming. Yep. That hits Tencent. Uh, we've seen Jack Ma's decision to retire, whatever the reasons behind that were. Yep. Some people speculate there was something deeper there going on, maybe rightly, maybe wrongly. I think the attitude is pretty similar, actually. The day. But we talked about this a little bit behind stage. I don't see Chinese companies as an existential threat, the way the big tech is fomenting that notion to create a nationalist argument that if you believe American tech companies, Chinese warriors weaponized by AI are coming for our babies, yeah, so but don't you, break you, us up. You and I disagree on that. I think what we're witnessing in the trade war is really you know, a battle of, between two countries who's top dog. I, yep. I believe in uh, historical trends, you know, con congruity of cycles, if you like, and the Chinese were on the wrong side of history for 200 years. Yep. You go back to the early 19th century, they were dominant. Yep. BRICS and Next 11 was 40% of worldwide GDP. It will come again. And I just think it's a question of time. You've got 1.2, 1.3 billion playing against 300 million. And I'm not saying for one minute I'm deprecating or degrading American expertise, but I just think the quantum is there. And on your point about Chinese companies not being global companies, it's only a question of time. Yep. I mean, you were negative about companies like Lenovo or Hire or Huawei or whatever it happens to be. I think their domestic market is so powerful and yep. so strong that if you and I were running a Chinese company, we would say, let's focus on our 1.2, 1.3 billion consumers, and then we'll fan out the rest of the world. Yep. And some of the Chinese companies are going after the, not the big markets, not US or European markets, but going to where they have the least competition. Yep. And they're following Chinese soft foreign policy into Africa, mm -hmm. into Latin America. If you travel there, it's amazing what the Chinese are doing in terms of influence, soft power influence and economic influence, you know, cheap loans. Yep to buy Chinese Loan machinery, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think it's just a question of time before they, they, they do it. So there's downstream integration of Verizon buying Oath and then AT&T buying Time Warner. Good moves, viable competitors, accretive acquisitions. You're one of the greatest well, acquirers in history. Veri Veri Verizon has gone now in a different route. They've already written it off. Yeah, Hans Vesterberg has basically yeah, said that he's not from what I understand, he's not going to sell Oath because, interestingly, a large amount of his infrastructure costs yep. are serviced, if you like, by, by Oath. It's yep. almost like a, an in-house IT department, so getting rid of it means you have to replace it. So mm -hmm. I don't think he'll do that, from what I hear, but he's totally focused on 5G. AT&T, however, have gone totally the other way. High-priced acquisition, a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe they'll put pressure on the business for performance. And as you said, you know, media businesses are going to be pushed, particularly legacy media businesses, with the internet companies garnering so much of the growth, they're going to be pushed to grow. Yeah. So I think there's pressure there. Fox, Disney, different. Yep. There'll be some more consolidations, CBS, Viacom, et cetera. But you know, the merchant bankers might make fees out of it. L longer term, I'm not sure that these moves, particularly when you see you know, telcos getting together, with it, you know, maybe if Peter Chernin had ended up yep. inside AT&T Time Warner, maybe. I mean, somebody who maybe had an understanding of how the industry worked, maybe. But I think it's going to be difficult for them, yeah. particularly. Now, Comcast and Sky seem to be out of character yep. in terms of price paid. And overpaid, yeah. Um, but maybe this was the last chance saloon. So maybe that was driving Brian Roberts to do, to do what he did. So we have to see how it plays out. But to my mind, in the digital space, I mean, as I look at S4 and its development, the core companies are the 10 that I, that I mentioned, and particularly the Seven Sisters. So put the software companies to one side. And I use the analogy Seven Sisters for the obvious reason, that the energy companies came under pressure. That's were, obvious? Well, right. oil companies. Oh. Sorry about that. Hold on, hold on. Before hold on. your All time. Right, a, couple, a, couple, a couple quick questions. So I'll make a statement you agree or disagree in 30-second response or less. Um, Imp impossible. 
Twitter, Twitter, Pinterest, BuzzFeed, Vox. Just met the guys from Vice. They seem nice. Refinery you know, 29. Ex, ex guy from Vice. Refinery 29, Twitter. My thesis is they're all out of business. They just don't know it yet. Your turn. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think they're all out of business yet, but I think they will find it tough. Very find it tough against that trial. Plan. I mean, don't don't we have all the oxygen being sucked out of the room by three players? Well, that may or may not be the case. We have to see whether anybody gets there. But yep. the do the dominance they have, the lead that they have, gives yep. them a tremendous advantage. Yep. I mean, we we did you know we snap. You didn't mention snap. Dead. Snap. <laughs> oh my God! I thought we'd listen to that response. That's hilarious. So t t talking about. <laughs> by the way, if Zuckerberg were really honest and it had a lot of integrity, he would call the next version of Instagram Snap. I mean, <laughs> every day. So Snap has lost twenty billion dollars in value since its IPO. It's now worth eight billion, which is ridiculously overvalued. Ridiculously overvalued. Every day. Somebody wakes up and says, I'm going to Instagram stories versus Snap. And this is the danger of two class companies. You have a 31-year-old or 29-year-old CEO who's already taken hundreds of millions of dollars out, who cannot be removed from office, thinks he has a vision for the company. Can he be a real fiduciary for people? Can he be a real fiduciary for shareholders? And AT&T has no chance with Xander either. I don't even know what that is. Uh, well, this is their new, their new division. Yeah, so Snap, up. what do you think? Do you think Snap has any shot? Well, it, it got a little bit of traction from a viewership point of view after Facebook started to run into difficulties. If you look at the stats, the usage stats have improved significantly, not the internal management structure, which you're pointing to, or the, those internal dynamics, but the usage certainly has improved as Twitter has improved, but it's a question of monetizing it in, a, in effect. But if you broke these companies up and you did away with two class shareholder systems, what you'd have is Snap would have been sold by now and have more life to it. I think it would have a better partner. You would have a broader ecosystem, more investment, more venture capital. We talk about right now these companies aren't being broken up because of what's called consumer harm in the U.S., where as long as it doesn't harm consumers for the last 30 or 40 years, we well, don't break them up. Well, that's Jeff Bezos's argument. You know, when asked. What is Amazon going to look like in five years' time? He says, right. well, we'll be selling consumers goods and services at cheaper prices. But at Facebook and Google, is the consumer you and me or is the consumer advertisers? I would argue that the consumer's advertisers, and every year it has fewer and fewer choices, and they're extracting more and more rent. Well, I, and with Amazon, I, 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 hold on, we don't know what we're missing, because try and start an e-commerce company right now. A little it's impossible. Bit, a little bit unfair, I think, in terms of Facebook and Google's yields. I mean, certainly the data that I see. Yep. Uh, is persuasive, certainly in relation it's to good the, for advertisers. In, in, yeah, in in relation to traditional. Now there may be some pricing changes taking place, yep. which will make traditional a little bit more competitive. But I think on 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 balance, Google, Facebook, Amazon deliver good value and yep. demonstrably good value. I mean that old quotation about I know I waste half my advertising, but I don't know which half. Maybe it's been reduced to, I know, I so waste 25 So you're making an argument they, they would make that these network effects and being big is a good thing. Well, I would say the consumer has benefited and the advertiser has benefited as a result. It's not all as negative as, yep. you, would, as you would say. You, you make arguments about shareholder structures. Mm -hmm. um, all of the companies that we're talking about have gone through periods of time mm -hmm. when they've been under pressure. Mm -hmm. Coming back to Facebook, where we started the conversation, I think they can work their way through it. Yep. Agreed. Whether they have to change the structure as yep. radically, I mean, you get applause for suggesting radical change. They're, you know, they're a victim at the moment, but that can change. You really think Facebook's a victim? In, well, I, I do think all three companies have suffered at various times. We've had to deal with them as, you know, agents of clients. Yep. And they have been resistant. They've changed. I mean, Cheryl mentioned this as well in her piece. They've employed 30,000 people. Now, yep. the, big, the big difficulty yep. with them was getting to admit that they weren't tech companies, they were media companies. Yep. And you virtually got to the stage where they're starting to admit that. The thing that worries me most about them in relation to your commentary is their willingness to share the data. Yep. That is where I think the rubber hits the road as far as them, because our clients are 
desperately worried about that. So I've got a bunch of airtime in the morning. I want to ask about S4, and then we'll move on, because I have this red light blinking. Uh, it's not blinking. It's, it's solid. It's solid, right. So <laughs> S4, so as someone, you created or pioneered this model, and I'm going to try and describe how you created billions of dollars in shareholder value, and I don't, I don't know if you're going to agree with it or not. But basically, you took. On the basis of the first 20 minutes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. So ba essentially, you took this non-investable category. Ad agencies were very dependent upon these method, messy things called human, financially unpredictable. And by buying a bunch of them and pulling them, you created an investable asset, created some economies of scale at a central level where you could help them with finance and acquisitions and human capital. And you could go out, and because they weren't on their own investable assets, buy them at six to eight, ten, six to eight times, and then trade them in the public markets at 10 to 12. And you made these wildly accretive acquisitions for several decades and created billions of dollars. It wasn't just acquisitions. It was organic growth as well. That's Did you hear that? Big Ben. Or am I, I having I didn't a stroke? Hear that. No, uh, so real quick, what, how does S4 create shareholder value, assuming you're not going to be able to pick up cheap well, acquisitions? Well, I always remember, you know, we had a McKinsey consultant just on before us, I think. Yep. I always remember McKinsey writing us, uh, that's the second one. They're trying to tell us something. Uh, writing us a survey which said, what's the key factor yep. in any company's growth? And it's finding where the revenue growth is. Yep. So my view is you go where the revenue growth is. So if I look at digital content, if I look at media planning and buying, yep. digital media planning, programmatic, that's where the strong growth is. I, and that's I, where S4 is going. Yeah. So the, it's a totally different model. Number one, yep. it's focused on the growth areas. Yep. Number two, it's faster, better, cheaper. Coming to a lot of the themes in your work, yep. right? And the theme in that presentation on agility is very much built around agility. And finally, it's about unitary structure. So instead of having earnouts, which fragments, Yep. You know, we, we heard some of the media, the legacy media companies talking about building entrepreneurial cultures, very difficult to do in a large scale organization. So bring the companies in half shares, half cash is the structure that we've done for the first two acquisitions. So, so you create a unitary structure instead of fra fragmented. So the holy trinity, if you like, of first party data, digital yep. content and programmatic, unitary structure, and faster, better, cheaper. That's it. Good stuff. We're peace out. Thanks very, very much. Very good. Thank you.